series. Let's clear this thing and uh, take a look at it. Empty magazine, empty pistol. So what do we have here? A lot of similarities with the Walther PP that we just covered. It's like its brother. It's its older brother, believe it or not. That's surprising. Uh, the Walther PP was from... 1935, and this, of course, from 1938. Um, this, though, is a wartime gun. This isn't a pocket gun, a backup gun. This isn't in 32 or 380. There's going to be a lot of you that um, are hating on the 32 and the 380 that are going to be happy to see we're stepping up to 9mm here. So you will consider this as potentially tactical right now, just because it's a 9mm. Um, and of course we have a, uh, short recoil design now, the, um, barrel and the slide lock here, and then the slide continues back with momentum to cock the hammer, chamber around, come back into battery again. Um, so we have a more sophisticated operation, but, uh, like the Walther PP, we have single action, double action. And uh, we have a decocker here that also functions as a safety. This thing is cool. It's It's got a lot of uses. It's interesting. It's not just a flick on and off safety. And uh, it's not just a, a decocker. It's kind of like an, an interesting uh, combination. Um, I'll show you in a minute when we start messing around with uh, some snap caps. or some interesting stuff you could do with it. Um, we have... Finally, a slide hold open here. So our, our last round in the magazine, we have a slide staying open to let us know the magazine is empty and also to help facilitate. We have a heel release here for the magazine. Um, we help facilitate if we're dropping the mag and, and we're uh, reloading. Bang, we're back into the battery ready to go again with just the flick of a thumb. And, and this, uh, you know, there's some guns that's really... Difficult to press that slide release. It's like you almost got to contort your whole wrist to the side and push it. And then you be like, wow, if I was really in a combat situation here, I could have a problem manipulating that thing. Like, I don't even know if I trust it. I think I would reach and grab the slide anyway, just because I can't trust that I'm going to be able to press that with my thumb. But not here. This thing is like smooth as butter. You just, you know, you just breathe on that thing. It's awesome, and it also works, you know, you get your thumb underneath it to lock open. You know, it does the same. It kind of works both ways here, and uh, it's it's smooth as silk, you know what I mean? And uh, what else do we have here? Oh, the, the magazine release here on the heel, you might think, you'd be like, wow, how is this newer than the PP, and we're going from, they had a good thing going with that thumb release, you know? Why would they have moved it to the heel? But... The Europeans, they didn't think about it that way. This, still in the 30s, this to them was the way you release the magazine. But what Wolther did do was improve the function of this. Isn't that it's, it's very, very ergonomic. You have a little bit of a lip here for a positive removal. So you get your finger right underneath that. To, as soon as you press that, it's really popping out on you there. And uh, very smooth release. No terrible amounts of pressure that need to be done. And this big wide button here made this feel very easy. And not just that, but the insertion of the magazine, you could see you could even come in from a weird angle and you were still okay. This angled entrance here could be like, you know, the earliest attempts at, you know, making magazine wells that uh, function tactically, believe it or not. So you can see that there's no more of that, like, having to, like, 
push the magazine back. Remember I was using like this pinky to push back on those releases to be able to get the magazines in quick. There was a lot of fumbling going on there. Now with this guy, you don't have to depress this to insert the magazine. The magazine goes right past it. You can see that it goes right past it and in without having to touch anything. Smooth as silk. Boom, boom. We're reloading now. Much easier, okay? So let's uh, let's take some of our uh, realistic snap caps here and uh, load up a magazine. These things are awesome. They have a uh, cushiony firing pin protector there in the primer channel, like a silicone pad there to protect the uh, firing pin if you dry fire on them. They have this bonded projectile, and these things are like bulletproof beat the crap out of them they like uh last forever uh check out the description down below you can get 10 percent off using my coupon code and free shipping on these things and uh their price is very reasonable so with uh what i wanted to show you is look at smooth as silk this thing loads it's awesome now you hit this decocker slash safety here cool thing about it is you could still cycle to manipulate the action you see how you're staying safe and the hammer is dropping every time you cycle the slide see how the hammer will drop every time so you're staying in this safe mode right and you're still able to operate the action and the second that the safety comes off watch the trigger you're going into double action there on the first shot so bang first shot's double action we cycle it Here's the trigger reset and the single action. Trigger feels great. And uh, man, this thing is just, it's just awesome. What can I say? It's just uh, 1938. It's unbelievable that, that this stuff was around in uh, ninth. These features were around in 1938. A lot of people wouldn't think so. And look, see? I'm not lying to you. This is the coolest slide release you'll ever feel. Why can't they do that today? How come today when you get a pistol, you like tearing your thumb up on the thing and you can't even, you got to be all contorted to even uh, get it to work. Don't understand that, but uh, somehow in 1938, these guys had it figured out. So that's the Walther P38. This is one of my favorites. Is it tactical? Hell yeah. See you all next time. Stay healthy. Uh, stay safe. And um, got some cool stuff on the way. See you soon. Okay, well, of course, I did forget something. There's something that I wanted to mention. There's a little quirk with the P38 that uh, when you talk tactics, it definitely bears mentioning. So we load around here, okay? We take the magazine out, okay? Let's just say... Just give it a little tap just to make sure that it's in this mode that I want it to be in. I'll show you why the tapping matters. Now, when we go to cycle the action, the extractor is pulling the round out of the chamber, but the ejector is not ejecting it. That could matter. You could struggle with that. If you have an empty case there, even, you know, you would, you would have an issue with that. So uh, I'm going to explain to you why that happens, and I'm going to show you how you could rectify this. Just check this out. Just by tapping the gun backwards... One more time. Now we're ejecting it. Why the hell is that? I'll show you one more time. We're going to chamber around. Nothing, right? So turn it backwards. You just face it upwards and it ejects. Why is that? I'll show you why that is. Okay. Slide held open. Let me zoom in a little bit here. Can I zoom in? Will it let me zoom in? All right. Here's our extractor right here. All right. Let's get around in here. By the way, the uh, it's not the follower that holds the slide back, so you could just slip around in there, which is kind of cool. Um, so here's the uh, extractor. I mean, here's the uh, ejector right there, right? 
So if we remove the magazine, watch that ejector. It can fold down here if it's jostled. It can move around here. See, by, I just shook the gun and it's back up. Give it a tap. Tap forward. It's not moving for some reason, but that's the thing. It's like uh, you never know when it's going to move, when it's not going to move. But I'll tell you one thing, when the magazine is in, it holds it up. So you never have a problem when it's when you're cycling rounds through when the magazine is loaded, when the magazine is in. It's when you have a round chambered and the magazine is out. If the gun should be tapped like this, say forwards, the extractor will fold, the, I'm sorry, the ejector will fold down. You can almost see it there between the round and the wall of the uh, receiver that it's in that folded down position. Supposedly the non-wartime guns had a spring that held it up, but these wartime ones, no. But it's just kind of like a quirk that if you hold it backwards, I even just heard it, you could hear it click. And if you get the extractor upwards, um, then it will extract. So if you're having a situation where you have a round chambered, the magazine is out, and you're not able to get it out, just remember that that extractor needs to be folded back up. So just by tilting the gun back like that, you get it out. There you go. That might save the day one day. All right, y'all. Take care. Yes, yeah,